Good morning, everyone, from Call to Transparency. And that is truly what this series is about. I have a fire burning in my bones today about loving and respecting ourselves. We can't expect other people to respect us if we don't treat ourselves with respect. And you know, I just heard in my spirit joy in sorrow. Sometimes it takes us being in sorrow and connecting to our one-of-a-kind hearts. And then there's joy in that because we can feel our hearts. I often share, I got saved when I was 29, and I was living on automatic pilot. And now, all of these years later, my greatest weakness has become my greatest strength. And I truly am an advocate of the heart. I beseech you, child of God, to respect your one-of-a-kind heart, which I choose to call the garden of the Lord. You know, sometimes when we have to make decisions, and it's the only right decision, it may feel horrible. That doesn't mean it's the wrong decision, on the contrary. But the way we get healthy is to make one healthy decision at a time. And this is just on my heart. There's a scripture that says something about no one knows the, the, the heart of sorrow but self. Something like this. There is joy in the sorrow because the very fact that we can feel the sorrow means that we are fully alive. How many of us have been so disconnected from our hearts? And I often say, you know, there may have been a time when I thought ministry was the most important thing. It's not at all. Not to God. Our heart condition is what's most important to God. Because if we're truly going to be effective, if we are going to affect change in this life, we have to get our hearts healed. We have to be on a healing path. How on earth can we extend mercy, love, and compassion, real mercy, love, and compassion with an, to another if we're not even merciful, loving, kind, and compassionate to our own hearts? How many of us are walking around this earth, sleepwalking, totally disconnected from our hearts. And it's not acceptable for my life. And you know, we can learn in relationships. We can see and observe and go, thank you, God, for reminding me by observing something. I never want to be that way. I, you know, relationships, it's in relationships we can get hurt, but it's in relationships that we're healed, and God is all about relationship. And we can learn to be better people by being in relationship with others. And we need to learn how to be honest in love, and we can then help one another grow and become better people. But I beseech you, child of God, to be honest in love. God calls us to great integrity. And there's a scripture, I believe it's in Proverbs, that says, he who walks purely walks securely. And I remember when I was ministering in Australia many years ago, the pastor, no, no, I was, I was preaching and I was referencing that scripture, but I was trying to pretend to have an Australian accent because some of the Aussies really have strong accents. And so I was kind of mimicking saying that with a with an Aussie accent and it was funny and I remember hearing that and so when I think of that scripture I think of it with an Australian accent anyway which I love so he who walks purely walks securely God calls us to integrity he calls us to speak the truth in love yes Yeshua said that he's he's humble and meek you know it says in Matthew I think it's 11 chapter 11 is it 28 to 30 um come to me all you who are weary and heavy laden and i will give you rest take my yoke upon you for i am gentle and meek and you will find rest for your soul so yes he's gentle and he's meek but he's also we can see from scripture that he also yeshua also got righteously angry when they were making a marketplace in the temple in his father's house and he was very angry. 
So uh, let's not think that as believers, we're never supposed to get angry. We're never supposed to. No, anger is an emotion. It's just what are we doing with it? You know, we need to acknowledge all of our emotions. Absolutely. And so today I'm just taking time with the Lord and he's bringing me through some things that I'm needing to bring to him. And he's faithful. So when I come to him, he's surely going to meet me. And I need to take the step of responding to God. If we never get into his presence, our relationship with God will be very empty. We're certainly not nurturing the Holy Spirit, uh, the person of the Holy Spirit. We're not nurturing it. We're not fanning that flame. We're just, you know, the hungry get fed. And if we're not hungry, if we're not going to the Lord, we're not going to get fed. So we can have all that we want to eat from the Lord, which is absolutely awesome. So I beseech you today, I'm saying that the third time, please, please take care of your heart. And you know, this scripture, I feel like there's so many misunderstandings in the body of Messiah. The scripture that says, where Yeshua says, take up your cross and follow me. It doesn't mean neglect your heart. It means don't live a self-centered life. It means I'm now, if you're following me, now I'm in the driver's seat. Yeshua says, I'm this, I want to be the center of your world. Take yourself out of the center. It doesn't mean neglect yourself like you don't mean anything. No, no, on the contrary. God calls us to be an excellent steward, an excellent responsible steward of this one-of-a-kind life. I'm not replaceable. You're not replaceable. This one-of-a-kind call on my life, I am responsible to bring this forth with God. That's the key. As I partner with God, I can't do anything without God. I need to abide in him and he abides in me. Certainly, as I partner with him, he's the leader, I'm the follower. I can bring bring into this world what I'm called to bring, which nobody else can because I'm one of a kind. You're one of a kind. There's a one of a kind mold for each of us and I will never change, never change my conviction about that. God said if it were only you, child of God, I would have died for you. Yeshua would have gone to his execution stake for you. And he rose from his tree of sacrifice, his execution stake, what the world calls the cross, he rose from the dead, conquering death, making a mockery and humiliating every demonic entity in this universe. Rose from the dead, proving he is God. He is the prophesied and promised Jewish Mashiach of the Hebrew Scriptures. Yeshua the Messiah, the hope of glory. He says, because I live, you also live. Hallelujah. And in Revelation 21, 5, he says, Behold, I make all things new. Listen, if you're living for the approval of man, that's about the size of it. You're not going to get filled up on God because you're living for the approval of your neighbor. This is not God's will for your life. And we will have to draw that line in the sand. Choose you this day who you will serve. God says that in Tanakh, in the Hebrew Scriptures. Yeshua says in the Brit Chadashah, He says you're either for me or against me. It's a radical life. If you are living for the approval of man, that's about the size of it. You're not going to get filled up and live a full life in Yeshua. Yeshua is the abundant life. It's inside. It's your relationship with him, which we need to fan every day, all day. And so life is empty without him. And this world has nothing to offer me. Yeah, there may be, you know, things that I enjoy, happiness, but real joy is on the inside. It's the filling up of, of the Holy Spirit. It's having that relationship with Yeshua through Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. So let's nourish and nurture that fan, that flame of Yeshua. Our passion, we need to fan the flame of our passion for Yeshua. And he's waiting for us with open arms. He simply says, step into my presence. You know, there's no joy here. I mean, joy is eternal. Joy is in Yeshua. Happiness is based upon, you know, what I have, what I don't have. And, and have material things can slip right through our fingers. Here today, gone tomorrow. That's not, that's not the real thing. No, no. It's, it's the relationship. It's the relationship with Holy Spirit. 
Yes, which is the spirit of Yeshua, God's salvation. Because Yeshua is sitting at the right hand of God, making intercession for us forever. And his spirit is here. And last year, the Lord really drove home this, this to me, especially in the context of my dance worship, which it's just awesome. You know, the scripture that says, whatever you loose on earth, you loose in heaven. So Yeshua is in heaven with God, and his spirit lives and breathes within me to do great works and empowers me. So literally, as I'm moving through this earth and I'm releasing my dance worship, what I am releasing here on earth is being released in heaven. It's awesome. And of course, we know after that it says, whatever you bind on earth shall be bind in heaven. We have the bound, so we have the authority in Yeshua to do great things, and we can't do that without Holy Spirit. So this is what we need to want more and more of and fan the flame of Holy Spirit. Every day we need to come into his presence through the power of the Holy Spirit and nurture and nourish, wow, our relationship is with God. And I just want to end here. My worship doesn't sound like your worship. My worship doesn't look like your worship. God needs our worship. He created us for relationship with him first and foremost we're created to be worshipers and priests before the king hallelujah our heavenly bridegroom king he wants to hear your voice he wants to experience your dance worship all of your worship however you express your worship because worship is a position of the heart but it's expressed song dance painting right whatever whatever you're doing unto god it's it, it takes an expression it doesn't just remain, it, it then needs to have an expression, needs hands and feet, so to speak, just like our faith. You know, it's an action. Love is, is a verb. It's an action. It's a doing, right? He loved us so much, he stretched out his hands and he died, only to take his life back up again. We can't leave him. He wasn't left there on that tree of sacrifice on the cross. He, he took it up again, hallelujah, sitting at the right hand of God, the Father forever making intercession for us. So if you have not called upon Yeshua, please pray with me today to receive him. You will not be disappointed. Hallelujah, Father, thank you for sending Yeshua, God's salvation, to be my atonement, my substitute. He poured out his blood. His body went up on that tree of sacrifice, on his tree of sacrifice. He shed his blood to be a propitiation for my sin, there will never be another atonement. He did it all. So when the Father sees me, he sees the blood of Yeshua. I have been made whole. I am restored. And not only will I be in heaven forever, because my sin is what separated me from God. Now I'm bridged back to God through Yeshua, the promised and prophesied Jewish Messiah of the Tanakh, the Hebrew Scriptures. Now, because I'm not imprisoned to this flesh anymore i can live a holy righteous life and i can come into the fullness of why i was created from the beginnings of time and why god fashioned me i can accomplish in this life what he has for me it's such an awesome awesome reality and so i turn away god from my sinful ways i repent of my sinful lifestyle I start anew right here and now, and I want to serve you, Yeshua, for the remainder of my days. I want to walk and dance with you forever, Yeshua. I give you my life. Would you come in my heart and be my Lord and Savior? And my promised Jewish Mashiach, if you're Jewish, you're now, you're now a completed and fulfilled Jew. You know, Jews don't convert to anything. It may be a turning back to Shuva to return to God. We don't convert We've become a completed Jew. Hallelujah. Because the Mashiach is a Jewish concept. We need to put Yeshua back into his Jewish heritage. He's not a Christian. He's a Jew. He lived as a Jew. He died as a Jew. I think he was born, as, born again, raised from the dead. As he is who he is. So let's put him back in, in, in his rightful place in the name of Yeshua. So God bless you, child of God. Get yourself around God, loving God, fearing people. Get yourself a complete Bible. Genesis to Malachi, continuing Matthew to Revelation. In the name of Yeshua. And mm -mm -mm, gulp 
chew up his word which is your spiritual food there's nothing in this world that can feed you as a born again child of god born from above we get fed on the word of god by his spirit yes so surround yourself with god loving people and um and run with god he is our prize upward and while we're here, let's come into the fullness of why we're created. And I'm going to end with my air shofar from the city of rejoicing. Shalom and lehitraot, peace, and see you later from Jerusalem with love.